If you've never made a coat or jacket before, then stay tuned, you may get some inspiration from this and you may want to make one of the patterns that I've made as well. So I thought I would just dive in and show you the coats and jackets I have made. One of them I don't have anymore, so that sort of sums up whether that was a good one or a bad one. But just how I feel about them and whether the pattern's any good and what I thought of them really, because they do, they can be quite an investment piece, but I have found with um, handmade coats and jackets, they are my most worn item in my wardrobe because they, if you get a classic style that every time every year when that season comes around again you're gonna wear that and so that so it's worth getting good quality fabric for something like a coat or a jacket so with that in mind I will launch in with my first ever coat now this is a bus trick pattern which I'll put on screen because I can't remember off the top of my head what the number is but it's quite a popular one now I do have a whole video about this which I'll link down in the description box below if you want to check out the full detailed review because I'm just going to give a brief overview. Now I went to um, what was called a festival of fabric in Suffolk a few years ago and they had various stall sellers and someone was selling remnants of silk and now silk can be very expensive so I bought these off cut and what I decided to do was join them together and piece them so to make my lining for my coat so I have a silk lining but obviously that is why it's not all the same colour. Um, same pattern but just in the two different colourways. Now this one here, I, I'll be honest with you, I made it a silly time of year. I made it in like February, end of February, which we were then about to go into spring and we hadn't had, we didn't have any more cold weather and it was just really hot to wear and then of course we went into lockdown because I think I made this, I think, February 2020. You can always double check me on my channel there or I'll put the date on the screen. So I didn't get a lot of wear out of it. Now this one here, um, the sleeve was not big enough. So I found it too tight so I did a full bicep adjustment and something went a bit funny. And so I have all this bulk of fabric, um, can you see here? And I just couldn't ease it in because of the sheer thickness of it. It's quite a thick wool. I couldn't ease it into the sleeve head and so the sleeve cap is it's probably the right term. So I had this like pleating on both sides. There's too much fabric being stuffed in there because I had to make the sleeve um, wider. Another thing that I did an alteration was, I thought, because I'm five foot three, I always have to shorten things by an inch at the waist and I believe I did do so on this coat. But I also shortened the sleeves. And I shouldn't have done because you can see they are halfway up my arms. So when I have my arms down by my side, they're sort of swinging above, so when I wear a jumper, I only have a t-shirt on at the moment, moment, there is a reason for that. When I have it down, um, any jumper or anything is going to be poking out the bottom. I did a lot of work, it took me three weeks, I think it was, of non-stop work to make this, because I watched or I followed, um, I used to, read a bl used to read sewing blogs all the time, then I had through, I had an app for doing that, and then the app like closed down or something, so I stopped reading blogs. But one of the bloggers used to then post on Instagram, and that's So Manju, and I will link her Instagram down below as well because she made this coat and she has a post on her Instagram so you can see her fitting process, and she showed how she made it. So she used sewing interfacing and put it in all throughout, and she hand sewed it in, and that is where I have then learned how to do that for um, one of the coats on which I made in last week's video but I'll show you that in this week's video as well but it's just I feel that it works better and it's more of a tailoring technique than using the iron on especially when you're working with wool so this here is quite a long coat I may need to just um, pan down so you can see the length of it so there we go I've actually got my slippers on I'll try and cut those off so it falls just below my knee so it's quite a good length, so if you're going out in the evening, it's going to cover up probably most dresses, keep you nice and warm. It's wool, it's, so it's, in, and it's interfaced, it's, and it's lined with silk. It's a really warm coat, it's quite a heavy coat, but and the one thing is, because it has the facing on the, um, the wool is the facing on the inside, can get a bit itchy, so it's advisable to wear a scarf with it. So I think, that, you know, overall wise, the construction is good. Now there is a reason why I'm not wearing a jumper. So the reason why I'm not wearing a jumper is because I overfitted it. So I forgot that obviously when you're wearing a coat, especially a winter coat, you more than likely have a jumper to wear and I cannot, I mean I can just squeeze on a very thin jumper, but it's super tight. 
So worn over a t-shirt, it's fine, but the sleeves really bother me. And no one else will probably notice, but I mean, obviously I can cope with the shortness of the length of the sleeves, but this bit here does bother me, but I'm really proud of it and I've kept it just because it's a reminder of how much work I put into it and that I was able to make a professional looking coat. So that is coat number one. So that is a butterick coat. Like I said, I will tell you on screen which one that is. Now these are in no particular order. I just wanted to show you that first one because this is completely different. So this is a denim jacket and this is by So Over It. It's the Sorrento denim jacket from their ebook summer dreaming that's it i had to think off the top of my head which one it was from so you can't buy this as a standalone pattern you have to buy it as a collection but quite often so over it especially in like black friday and things they do have sales come up every now and then with sort of 20 percent off the ebooks so it is worth getting obviously they are all pdf patterns so you could you could just buy the collection of patterns if you only wanted the jacket and then just pay to get or print off just the jacket rather than print off all the patterns um, in the collection. So this one is made, this was originally a fabric when I did a brand ambassador I think it's called, I don't have anything to do with that company anymore but I have got a brief video, I think I did a video which was five makes in five minutes something like that back on my channel any detail any videos I mention I'll put down in the um, description box below so I can't remember what size I made but it probably tells you in that video at the minute I have undone the cuffs but these have all the official jean um, press studs are they buttons and things I bought when I made this when I made this jacket I did actually go and buy a green hand press because I felt like I wanted um, the hardware on properly and then I, I really messed up because I was like why is this not going in why am I breaking the buttons and I had the wrong um, what do you call it the die I had the wrong dies in and so they were crushing the one because I hadn't put the right one in for the jeans buttons so I got it sorted but I had to re-buy more um, buttons so that really helped me. You can obviously attach when you, if you didn't want to buy something like a green press because it can be an investment piece. With these, you can then just use the hammer and the little spike and bang them on with a hammer and they work, you know, probably as well. I'm not sure, but I just thought, oh, I wouldn't, it's less scary and I'm less likely to dent a button in by, do not want to hit it too hard. So anyway, that is that. There's quite a lot of top stitching on this. I made this with my vintage um, Singer, is it Singer? Yes, vintage Singer 201K machine, the brown one, um, which does a straight stitch. And I did, and I had so much trouble with the top stitching until I realised I needed a specific top stitch needle. Once I put the top stitch needle in, it worked absolutely fine. But if you could do make this jacket and you have more than one machine, I would recommend having two machines set up: one with the top stitching and one with the regular thread. Although the instructions, I do remember, they tried to do, try to group it as much as possible so the top stitching was all done in one batch. It was a lot of changing and chopping about because you're changing not only your thread, but you're changing your needle as well each time, which is a bit of a faff and it does sort of make the process a little bit longer. But this is a great jacket, a denim jacket is a classic. I, well, I find it's a classic because you can have it, I've got jeans, so this is like a dark grey. So I've got navy jeans, so I can wear that then with blue or with black denim, that's absolutely fine. But obviously you can wear this over a smart dress and it dresses it down. And I just find, I also find I need to probably press this colour a bit more. And uh, there is no pockets on it. But it's a really good piece, it's a good size, I found it's a good length. I probably shortened it again, most things I do, I'm at the waist. But yeah, so this one is a classic. And the thing with denim is, the more that you wear it, the more it fades and wears out, the better it looks and more authentic. So a denim jacket is a really good piece. And if you want to stretch yourself, it's not tricky. It's just that there's lots of pieces involved. I mean, it's all just straight stitching. So it's denim, is, you know, is a quite, and this is not a stretch denim. So it's a really nice fabric to sew with, but it's just a bit of a, you know, what piece you put in together. Then you got the snaps and that kind of thing. Next up is a disaster, and it's so much of a disaster that I still have it in a packet because this year my brother-in-law was getting married in Northern Ireland. He lives in Northern Ireland, so that's why he's getting married. He was getting married in Northern Ireland, so I decided I was going to make an outfit for it. So I made a dress, 
and I thought um, I needed a jacket to go with the dress. So this is a new look pattern, again I can't remember what the pattern is so I'll put that on the screen. And I made it and um, I thought I needed, I had problems with um, pressing jackets which is probably one of the issues I had with my original wool coat. Um, I didn't have a clapper I don't think at the time and I just couldn't get a crisp like press on the seam. So I thought I'd heard someone say go to the dry cleaners, they'll be able to do that for you. Now when I went to pick it up the first time, um, what had happened is they had pressed the collar open but they had pressed it here and not, not um, here. So it completely rolled it over. So when you fl when you then opened it out, you could see like a double crease mark all the way down it. I was just like, what on earth? You, what on earth's gone on? So I said, no, I'm not happy with that. So I need you to then redo it. So they said, okay, come back in a few days. I went back in a few days, and I didn't notice at first. But then, look at this. I mean, obviously it's not designed to go over a t-shirt. This is designed to go over a jacket, and it was supposed to have one like closure which I was going to put there and I thought it fitted me right. It's a three quarter length sleeve so this is supposed to be this length on the sleeve. It was going to be a spring jacket. The wedding was in May. I think it was in May and yeah I thought oh that's a nice you know not too long quite a sort of smart casual. Can you see what they did? Oh they were wearing a t-shirt and you can see that. Um, my arm is probably putting it out now but they ironed a crease down the center of each of those sleeves. And as this is a violin fabric, which is like a wool viscose mix, I think, I didn't want to then press too hard trying to iron out the, the crease they put in. You see it more when it hangs here. I'm um, all down the, the out. I was like, why on earth would anybody so, not so, why would anybody iron a crease down the middle of the sleeve? So the, I did complain to the company's um, like head office and they said if I posted it to, mailed it to them, they would take it to their fabric, fabricologist or something to try and rectify it. I just didn't have the time and I didn't really trust them and then I thought why have I got paid to like send it to them to, you know, time wasn't on my side so unfortunately I never got to wear this to the wedding. I had a mad dash about a week before I was due to fly out and I went into the charity shop and I found a pashmina which I then put in the washing machine first freshen up and actually it was fine because I could then put it over my shoulders and then take it off on and off throughout the de throughout the afternoon and evening but I was really disappointed with this. The pattern was fine, I made a few adjustments, there's a whole video about me making the dress for the wedding and the jacket for the wedding, obviously didn't ever wear that but I've still got it for some reason. I may try and iron out the crease, I'm not sure. Next up is the Aura jacket by Pauline Alice. Now Pauline Alice patterns, I hadn't made that before. I had been eyeing up um, one of their winter coats and then I saw this. So it's a pattern for a quilted jacket and there's no um, closures as such. They're sort of like toggles kind of thing. You can put, there's not buttons really. Um, so it is more of an open coat. So what I did was I didn't want to quilt my own fabric. So I bought some pre-quilted fabric. So it was quilted on this side, but then inside it was just white. You could just see the white wadding. So it was only covered on one side of the fabric. So I lined it. So I had this polyester fabric from another coat, which I'll show you in a moment. And I had enough left over to just stitch together and make it into a lining because you may be able to see there's certain spots. I also make some, made my own bias binding for the sleeves because I didn't do this as an all-in-one. It was kind of... I was making up so I went along so I sort of lined the sleeves, lined the bodice, stitched them together and then just put bias binding around the seam um, and so I did that rather than having bagging out the lining and properly doing it so this is my quick way of lining the jacket. Now I made a few alterations to this one. This originally was waist length which is quite a nice length but I thought it wasn't, it didn't fit, it didn't finish in the most flattering length for me so I wanted to lengthen it. So I lengthened it by about I think five inches. The only problem is I went because it finishes at the waist and I just went straight down so I didn't go out. I have about a 10 inch difference between my waist and my hips and what I should have done is gone out when I then extended it and I didn't, I went down. So as a result, it's like super tight around my hips. Now I did buy some press studs because last winter when I made this, I thought I'll make some press studs so I can have it closed because the thing with this is when you have a padded coat, 
you're wearing it because it's cold but I can't do this one up so I basically wore this most of last winter with a scarf down to fill up the gap it has really big pockets the only downside to that is when you take your coat off fling it on a chair or something everything's going to fall out so my glove every time I put my coat in the back of the car or something when I was you know going somewhere I just don't like to drive in a coat I don't know it's a weird thing of me um, everything would fall out of the pocket so I would lose gloves and things so I would say that the, you know it's nice to have a big pocket but because uh, it's literally just this big open bit um, it can things can fall out now I have lined the pockets again with the polyester and then I made bias binding out of this navy fabric and I ripped it away from the padded bit and so it was just the blue piece made some bias binding and then just finished off the pockets with the bias binding so you couldn't see any join because this is not this is designed for just having your quilt your two quilted fabrics together that they're quilted it's not a lined jacket so there's no pattern or instructions for lining so I really kind of made this up as I went along the sleeves are set in really nicely I find on most things now I do a one inch narrow shoulder adjustment um, like I said I extended the length so it's a really good length it kept me warm all last winter I really liked it because quilted jackets and even this year as well they're quite a trend item but they can be a classic as well so I didn't want to make it in too outlandish a fabric I had to extend the sleeves twice because it came up really short and by doing it with a padded fabric rather than two fabrics quilted it is bulkier than if you perhaps had two cotton fabrics and quilted them together so I think it would be looser, a looser fit if you didn't use like the pre-quilted fabric so you mainly decide that if you want to do what I did and the only other thing is because where I've cut the pieces I am finding stray threads of where the top stitching for like the quilting design because I've cut into that um, they are all sort of poking out which is a little bit annoying but overall I've got so much use out of it and it's a really, and you know, I would say it's a good pattern. Couldn't tell you what the instructions are like because I didn't really follow them. Right, a couple more to show you. So this jacket here, this coat, is a raincoat and this is where I originally used my polka dot fabric and I had some left over which is then I used it in the lining of the other one. So this is the I Am Jacks raincoat by I Am Patterns. Now, I saw the jacket and I really like classic, I like the fisherman sort of yellow raincoats. I had a really um, nice yellow fisherman's raincoat a few years ago but I had to buy it at a bigger size in the shop because they didn't have my size but I really liked the coat and that's all they had so I found it was a little bit big so I ended up um, donating it so hopefully someone got good use out of it and I thought I will make one I'll make it in a nice colour so it's nice and bright so when it's like dark dreary days and raining like it has been today actually Wearing a bright pink coat, it just makes you feel a bit more cheerful than just wearing like black or navy or khaki. Now this one has lots of um, hardware. This is the impressive bit about this coat. It's because you've got a metal zip and you've got the press studs here. Now I didn't have my hand press when I made this. So this was done, these were all inserted with the hammer method. So it can be done and this is what makes it look like shop bought it doesn't look like somebody has made a raincoat i have worn this so much now i am patterns they had this um raincoat in limited sizes and so i emailed them and i said because of the hip width i think it was i said oh well i'm this do you think it will fit me if i make this size and she said no she the lady replied back said they're extending their size range and so she said um, I will, she, she gave me this pattern for free for testing out or for making it up in their new extended size range and um, all I had to do was literally just email her with a couple of photos afterwards it wasn't like a sponsored post or anything but I didn't have to pay for this pattern but it's well worth it if you do want it I would really recommend it because the only issue I had in the instructions at the time they may have changed it but they had funny measurements so with the seam allowance it changes sometimes and instead of saying um five eighths and three eighths that kind of thing it had something completely different in metric which it wasn't like 1.3 centimeters it was something completely different so i had to just sort of google what what that was in, in terms of like sewing machine measurements and just wrote that on my instructions and once I had marked that down it was absolutely fine they like really hold your hand throughout and the instructions are really clear 
So it's the first time making anything like this with anything kind of hardware other than buttons. And I really like it. I did have an issue that with the pull cord, you have to sew your channel in after you put the cord in. And I think I have caught the cord somewhere in the stitching because when I pull it, 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 you can't pull it like really tight but we've got these toggles on here which allow you when it is raining if I pull them and put it up like that it does keep my hood up so on a windy day that isn't just going to blow down so it's really handy oh it's getting my head hot it has really nice deep pockets I'm not very good at patch pockets usually um, but these have gone on absolutely fine and I, because they've got the poppers, two poppers on each pocket you can put all sorts in there, you know, plenty of room for car keys, mobile phone, shopping list these are all the things that I have and I like dashing out especially on like a school wear or something so you've got the zip, you've got that, I permanently usually keep um, gloves or what have I got in there lip balm, I've got a random pen I've got a reel of cotton not even mine, I found it somewhere. Oh, another lip balm. Oh, a packet of um, some mints, minted sweets. So, like I said, rainy, cold day, you can get your hands in there really good. Nothing's gonna fall out. You can then make sure you get a zip which is going to be rust proof. It goes right to the top. You've got those lovely studs which go over the top and it just finishes it off really neatly. And the really good thing about this coat is that it is quite a generous size, fit and size. It's not fitted in at the waist. So I have worn it with big bulky jumpers in winter time if it's raining rather than put a winter coat on because this is, this is PU fabric, like seven ounce I think it was. And it's completely watertight. I used a rounded needle. So it's really bizarre how it works. So when the rounded needle kind of goes through, it finds its way through the weave of the thread. Um, through of the, fa the weave of the fabric and when it comes out again it doesn't leave a hole so when I've done like the shoulder seams I did not need to put any like glue or anything and so when it has absolutely chucked it down I have stayed dry even on those seams I, the water just doesn't come in and with it being lined I guess that gives extra protection but I have been absolutely soaking wet the last couple of weeks and it's just you know it's kept me dry so a raincoat especially if you're in the UK is a real must it's a really nice um, thing to have and like I said I wear this all year round it is honestly it is my most worn item I have ever made this is going to last me a good number of years until perhaps I get sick of wearing the colour pink but I really recommend the pattern and if you're not sure about that pattern definitely a rain coat in the UK it's just really handy you've got that sort of windproof factor so you get one with a hood and you can wear that and layers up underneath and I cannot say, I never really said that much about it in my original video when I did this, but this is, like I said, my proudest make, my most impressive make, and nobody has a clue that I made it because of, as you can hear it, the jingle of all the hardware on that one. One more. Oh, actually, I just, oh, one thing. If you were interested in making a wool coat and you thought, well, I don't know how to like, I want it to hang, I just remembered I have another coat upstairs right before I would just I'll cut and I would go and nip that and get it before I show you my so I've got two more coats to show you if you're making a wool coat this um, book here the just tailoring by it doesn't even say who it's by it literally just says tailoring on it but this one here you should be able to pick up on Amazon this one shows you different techniques for how to do if you're doing things like sew on interfacing and things it will show you the stitches it'll also tell you how you can like pad out the shoulder so you haven't got like a just slopey shoulder so it sits nice and this and it looks really professional with the interfacing so um this is really good for a couple of like handy tips and hints if you're making something like a blazer or a suit you probably want to you know word for word but there's really clear pictures you could just look at the pictures and see the techniques of what you need to use and i've used this as well right let me just quickly go and get that other coat i can't believe i forgot that one okay i have gone and fetched the other coat which i'll show you in a second so this is last week's coat i made this one in a week i had a week off work kids were off we did bits and pieces and i just did a little bit each day and this is the Closet Core Clair Coat. So this is made in a wool fabric. I have lined it with just a polyester anti-static lining. 
Now, if you want to know more details about this one, I will put it on screen. I'll put a link up um, at the top there because last week's video was all about this coat. So this is just to show you, this is the, oh, one more. There we go. Made in a green wool. It's quite roomy. I wore this to fireworks night when it's been really cold and I had two jumpers on underneath this and it, there was still room to move. So I'm really glad I did it. The, the snaps that I put on are so on snaps. I tried to get ones online, but then he had bl Prim did some, but they were black and I didn't want black and they were worked out quite expensive. So I found these from Amazon. They're almost like an antique sort of gold. I think they said that they were rust proof, but they are quite loose. So I think after a few times of going popped and unpopped, they may not stay done up. So I will um, keep an eye on it. But I mean, that's how easy they are to undo. And I will show you my last coat which has the prim snaps on. Now this one, this one is the Mallard jacket by The Sewing Revival. This comes in two lengths, so I made the shorter length, and these are the black. They're, you'll hear the difference when I snap them. Um, so it's more of a real pop rather than a ping. Um, so this one here, like I said, there's two options of the lengths. When I made this, I did a video and someone said they thought that I'd made a size too big and that I should have made a smaller size, but I wanted it to go over a jumper. Unfortunately, I did wear this at fireworks night last year or a bonfire night and I was freezing. So this is not a wool fabric. If it was, it would be a lot warmer than what it was. Now, the only issue I have, I think, cause I have like a forward shoulder, sloping shoulder. So I feel like it should have interfacing here. So it sits nice and flat. They just sort of look a bit, I feel like it looks a bit sloppy. The pockets are done really well, so you have these flaps, but the pocket, your hand actually goes in behind them. With the short length, it, I do feel like I'm putting my hands up near my armpits. They are like, they're not enough, you know, you wouldn't have your hands in your pockets. Obviously the jacket isn't long enough to have them where you'd perhaps here, like a, like a slanted pocket. They're just, you know, you wouldn't, it just feels uncomfortable. It feels unnatural to have them at that height. I compared the sleeve length of this coat to the sleeve length of the Claire coat, and they was the same length. So I didn't shorten the Claire one because this is, um, I may have shortened this one, but this is like a really good length of how it is. So yes, yeah, so bear in mind, if you want to make that other one, um, the sleeves might come out a little bit short from you. So this, I feel like it's a good length on terms of sleeves. The finish is okay, sort of midway through my backside. I just, it bothers me about the interfacing. The sleeves went in okay. It's just not warm enough. It's a very, mm, mm, like, so-so coat. There's nothing fabulous about it. There's nothing really statementy about it. I think it is quite, because it is quite boxy. And maybe the, if you made it in a more interesting fabric, it would be better. I nearly made the long version of this, but I just wasn't feeling it. So I've worn it a couple of, I think I wore it to that bonfire night. I might have worn it on a school run and that was it. There's no warmth in it. There's no padding to it. It has literally just got a little bit of interfacing in um, on like the hems and things, but not, um, oh, the hems not actually, the lining's not actually attached so I can see. There's sort of interfacing on this front bit, but the rest of it is not. There's just no warmth. So you've got a thin fabric and then you've got the lining fabric. So the pattern's okay. Nothing majorly to write home about. I think if you were making perhaps as a spring jacket, so you didn't need any padding, you didn't need like a big um, thickness on it, it would be quite nice out of like a cotton drill or something. I think that would work, but as a winter coat, no, I'm not, it's not selling itself for me. Tell me what's on your to-do list at the moment um, for this coming season, what you're currently working on. Have you started on Christmas yet or was that a little bit too early? And also before you go, don't forget to check out my coat, play, coat making playlist, which I will put on the screen here, so you can see some of the other patterns and you'll see the missing one, because I did make a, a Vogue blazer into a coat, which I no longer have, that has disappeared. So if you want to know the details of that one, check out my playlist here.